Hello, in this video I'm going to be talking about recursion. Um, maybe you learned about recursion in another class, uh, but maybe not as well, so I'll kind of talk about it from the beginning. Um, recursion is this idea when a function or a method uh, calls itself. And, um, and there's mathematical reasons for why this might show up. Um, so I'm just trying to do kind of one simple example um, now to kind of get our mind in the right spot, and that's with factorials. Maybe you remember from math that 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Uh, 4 factorial would be all the numbers multiplied by each other from 4 to 1. And then uh, kind of down at the end, 0 factorial is just 1. And, um, and so I'm almost using this uh, exclamation mark, that's the factorial symbol. Uh, I'm kind of treating it like a function, right? So maybe a way I'd rather write this is something like this. Factorial of 5 equals that. And then factorial of four equals this. So it's a little bit closer to Python code. Uh, factorial of zero equals this, uh, kind of so on and so forth. And when you're looking at this, you're gonna notice that there's a little bit of self-reference, right? Like um, when I look at what factorial of four equals, that shows up as part of the answer for factorial of five, right? So I can actually, I could rewrite this if I want as, you know, Factorial of five is five times the factorial of four. Um, I'm not really showing the factorial of three here, but if I were, I might write it like this, factorial of three. And, um, and, and so what you can try to see is that there's this pattern, right? I get the factorial of something is that something times the factorial of something minus one, right? And, and when I kind of self-reference myself, right? Factorial, for, find in terms of factorial, uh, it, it can simplify things. So how would I actually write code for something like this? I, I could write my function, maybe I'll write factorial, and, and then I'll say, well, what is the factorial of n? And there's no reason I can't call myself. I can say return, fact, well, I can return, let me just try to write this a little bit more generally. Um, kind of the pattern here is the factorial of n equals n times factorial of n minus one. Okay, so I'll just do that. I'll return n times factorial of n minus one. And I do that, and well, let's just kind of step through this and see what happens. Well, nothing unless I actually call it. But let me get the factorial of five. And it's kind of running my code. It seems like it's taking a while for some reason. And, and I guess I kind of crashed, right? Well, what, what happened here? So let me kind of step through this. I'm calling factorial of five. So you can see over here on the right that I get a stack frame where I'm passing in five. And, and then before I can really return, right before the return completes, I have to compute this on the right, which is going to involve calling factorial of four. So when I call that, what I want you to notice is that even though I only have one function here, when it calls itself, I can might have uh, kind of multiple frames for the same function that are active at the same time. So, so I'm kind of this is the current frame I'm in, kind of the bottom of the stack, right? I, I might call this all these frames like uh, a stack of frames, or I might call one of them just a frame or a stack frame. I'm gonna run this, and then I'm gonna get well before I can return for factorial of four, I have to compute factorial of three. And so I'm gonna keep going. And really, when I get to zero, it just keeps on drawing. And this would, in theory, go forever, except that I'm limited in how many frames I can have uh, when I'm programming. And so there'd actually be an error called a stack overflow um, error, and this wouldn't work. And, and the reason why I ran into trouble here is that this is only usually true. Notice that for factorial five, I can define that uh, kind of in, in terms of a recursive case. Factorial four, I can define that in terms of a recursive case. But factorial of zero, guess what? I'm not calling myself in that case. And so maybe I should make a little note here. Uh, I, I should say that this is for n greater than zero. And, and so down here, I could actually do this. I could say, well, when I actually get to factorial of zero, I don't want to keep going. I could say if um, n equals zero, you know, if I'm calling factorial and n equals zero, guess what? I know the answer. I don't have to call myself anymore. I'm going to return one. And so now kind of at the back at the beginning here, um, what, why is it still, uh, there we go. Uh, Python tutor was being a little weird. 
uh, let's try kind of running through this. Okay, so I'm gonna call factorial five. Um, is n equal to zero? No. So I'm gonna call, well, I'm gonna return five times whatever factorial four returns, right? So I get that. Now I'm running factorial of four and factorial of four is trying to call factorial of three. Factorial of three is trying to call factorial of two. Factorial of two is trying to call factorial of one. That's trying to call factorial of zero. And now I get to this interesting case where it turns out that now this is true. And so I'm going to return one instead. Uh, this is the base case. The base case means I don't call myself anymore. And so when I return, this stack frame over here on the right is going to go away. And, and then I'll know what the answer of factorial zero is for this one, right? That's where I'm gonna kind of go back to. So I'm gonna run that and I'm gonna return one. And now I'm back here, right? You see that that frame went away and now I'm at the next one. I'm at, at this one, factorial of one. And now I'm gonna return what? One times a factorial of zero. And I already got the answer back for that, which is just one. And so now I'm gonna kind of do this unwinding, right? And you can see that this kind of keeps growing, right? Factorial of six. So the next answer is going to be factorial of four times what factorial of three returns, which is six, right? So, you know, I'm returning six now. The return value for this one is going to be four times six, which is 24. Right? You see, I got 24 here, right? So I'm going to return that. And then finally, I get all the way back here to the beginning and I have and I have 120, which seems correct. And that's my final answer. And I guess, uh, you know, if I was trying to be, let me just run that to the end. And then maybe I end up saving that in some variable at the end. So I'm gonna head over to um, my iPad and kind of draw out how I would trace through this code uh, if I wasn't using a Python tutor. How could I think through this? And so, so let me kind of just head over here. Um, and I'm going to switch to my iPad, like so. And, and here I have that same function I was just talking about. And so how would I think through this? How would I figure out what factorial of 5 is? And for this kind of code where I'm just kind of returning an answer and not doing anything, the key is just to kind of take very detailed notes because like each problem creates a new problem. And, and kind of I have to solve the simpler problems before I call, go back and solve the main problem. So, so maybe what I'll do is I'll say, well, factorial, factorial of five equals this piece, right? It's five times factorial of four, five times factorial of four, which equals, guess what? I don't know because I don't know what factorial of four is yet, right? So I'm kind of leaving you know, I'm leaving this problem, oh, I'm kind of leaving this problem hanging, right? I don't know what the answer is yet until I do factorial of four. Factorial of four equals four times factorial of three, which leaves a hanging problem. That's why you have to have very careful notes for, fact, uh, for kind of recursion, because you have all these problems in the air at once factorial of three equals three times factorial of two, which equals something. So now I have to figure out what factorial of two is. Factorial of two, and I should have kind of chosen a smaller example here, is two times factorial of one equals something, right? And then finally I have, well, actually not finally yet, factorial of one equals one times the factorial of zero, which equals something, right? That wasn't my base case yet. My base case is n equals zero, which is, I haven't done that yet, but I'm about to do that. My last case, I have factorial of zero and then looking up here, well, in that case, I just return one. That was my base case. That's the one thing I know, right? That equals one. 
And so now what I want you to see is that we can kind of unwind, right? I know factorial of zero, so I can actually go back and compute this, right? So factorial of zero is just one. So one times one is one. Now I know what factorial of one is, which is up here. So factorial of one is one. Two times one is two. So now I know factorial of two. Factorial of 3 equals 3 times factorial of 2, which I just figured out. That was 2. So I get 3 times 2. 6, right? So now I know factorial of 3. Going back, factorial of 4 equals 4 times factorial of 3. I just computed that. That was 6, right? And so I get factorial of 4 is 4 times 6 is 24. Right? I have that one. And then finally, I can actually go back and answer my original question. What is a factorial of 5? And the factorial of 5 is 5 times 24, right? So this just goes to 24, and I get 120, and that's kind of what I was drawing for. And, and so depending on what semester you took, um, 220 or 301, maybe you learned how to do this kind of thing. And, um, and that's all fine and well. And, and this strategy that I just showed works well when the function just returns things, okay? It's going to get harder for a piece of code like this is this code is not just, um, it's not just uh, kind of returning something, it's doing something. And so I want to figure out, well, what is the output? When I have this recursive call, what does this thing end up printing? And we have to draw a different function for that. What we have to really do is try to figure out, well, what were all the invocations of M? What were the parameters of those invocations? And what order did they happen? And to do that, I'm going to draw a different picture, which is what uh, we call a call graph. And so the way I start a call graph is I kind of draw that first call like this. I say m of 3. And then what I do from there is I look at when I call m of 3, what do I call and in what order? And so I'm going to call print 3. 3 is greater than 1, so I'm going to call m of 2. And then I'm going to print 3 again. Right, so, so I'm going to kind of draw this. I'm like, well, I'm going to print 3. I'm going to call m of 2. And, and then I'm going to print 3 again. Right, so I'm kind of drawing in order all the things that print that m of 3 does. Right, it prints 3, calls m of 2, and then prints 3. Now, before before it did this last print, it called m of 2. And I've shown that here, and m of 2 might do some other things. And I'm going to kind of think about what m of 2 does. So m of 2 is running down here. And the first thing m of 2 does is that it prints, it prints 2. Um, 2 is greater than 1, so then I run this code here. So then m of 2 calls m of 1, and then finally it prints, one, uh, it prints 2 again. You know, m of 2 prints 2 after it does that call. So I have that, and, um, and then now I'm kind of, kind of getting down to this last case, right? I want to figure out what m of 1 does. Uh, m of 1, well, it's trying to print 1, but this is false now. 1 is not greater than 1, so this won't run. So I guess m of 1, all it really does is it prints 1. So I'm going to print 1. Okay. And so now the final thing I want to do here, right, I kind of figure out, you know, all the different times m is called with what parameters. I figured out for each call of um, m, what it prints, but I still haven't kind of done that last step of figuring out what my output looks like. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say over in the top right, what is my output? And, and kind of the key here is I know all the different things that get printed, but I have to kind of think a little bit carefully about the order. And so, well, what is the order? Well, the very first thing that happened is that this print happened. Right, so I'm going to draw this here. Uh, the next thing happened is that this print happened. And I have to kind of be careful as I'm drawing these lines. They shouldn't cross each other. 
The third thing that happened is that this print happened. The fourth thing happened is that this print happened. The last thing that happened is that this print happened. And so, so my final output here is going to be what? It's going to be three, two, one, two, three. And, and so kind of using this call graph, right? This is a good strategy. You can deal with functions that aren't necessarily returning anything, uh, but, but they might um, be kind of taking some sort of action in the world. And, um, and when that action is uh, printing, well, you can think about, well, what order do those prints happen? And, and then get an output. Um, next time I'm gonna maybe look at an example where instead of printing, maybe we're appending things to the list. And that'll be kind of a similar strategy. If I figure out what order things get appended to the list, well, then I can kind of reason through what the list will look like um, at the end.